Will Vivek Ramaswamy become the next U.S. president or just another conservative blowhard? Here's why I have to ask. We're in a 1776 moment. We need people with conviction. And honestly, if, if I felt like that existed in the form of a newcomer like DeSantis or somebody else, I wouldn't be in this race. I don't need to be doing this. But part of the reason why is I think we need somebody who's courageous enough for courage to become contagious in America. And you know that's not going to be done by a follower. I think that's going to be done by a leader and likely an outsider, which is why I'm in this. By the way, I like Vivek. I actually admire the guy. But I don't believe anyone reluctantly runs for president simply because there's a void of better candidates and they feel they need to take one for the team by taking on the burden of leadership. That's not why people turn their lives upside down to run for president. It takes a special breed of hubris to seriously consider becoming the leader of any nation, especially the United States and the supposed leader of the free world or what we have left of one. If only more political candidates would just come out and say, look, I'm an overachieving egomaniac, and I think I can take a crack at ruling the country and possibly the world. Maybe there would be less corruption if that truth reared its ugly head. Because unfortunately, we do need government. There's no getting around that. And within government, we need leaders. The trick is holding these people accountable and making sure their ego doesn't inflate past Trumpian levels where he still believes he's entitled to the presidency and therefore we got January 6th, but that's not what this video is about. And this video is also not about bashing or ridiculing Vivek Ramaswamy. Though if he wants to actually be president, he better be ready for a lot of ridicule, scrutiny, and just outright haters. How and why people seek out these positions of power and all the stress that comes with it says a lot about their character and their motives. Yet I like a lot of what Vivek has to say, and he is an impossibly accomplished individual. From what little research I've been geeking out on the guy, it's hard to believe it's all true. That he got a biology degree from Harvard and a law degree from Yale. He's already amassed a net worth of over $500 million and he's not even 40 years old. And he's done so by starting up tech firms, a biopharmaceutical company, and his last business venture is an investment firm called Strive Management that has been financially backed by Peter Thiel. To top all that off, he's already written three books, and one of them, Woke Inc., Inside Corporate America's Social Justice Scam, was a New York Times bestseller. If that's not enough to give you a permanent inferiority complex, <laughs> while he was in high school, he was a nationally ranked tennis player. If the 2024 election boils down to Vivek versus Biden, or any other Democrat for that matter, I'm definitely voting for Vivek. However, that's if he stops talking about banning mutually agreed upon transactions between adults, such as banning companies from doing business with China. I'm calling for total decoupling from China. That will actually involve, I appreciate the applause, I do, but I'm going to be really honest about it. That is not going to be easy. That will involve some real sacrifice. I get it. As the son of Cuban exiles who fled the communist tropical gulag Cuba became thanks to the Castro regime, I don't need to be warned about the dangers of any communist party, let alone the Chinese Communist Party and its social credit system, its human rights abuses against Muslim Uyghurs, and many other atrocities against its own people. That's why I would rather hear Vivek talk more about policy solutions that involve incentives and rewards, not punishment and prohibition, which ironically is what he's been calling out regarding the whole woke industrial complex. And I definitely agree that wokeness is a problem. It's become a multi-million dollar grievance industry pushing for diversity, equity, and inclusion mandates, affirmative action hiring policies, and environmental, social, and governance investing standards that have actually caused some investment firms and pension funds to lose money. I'm all for good intentions, but not when they're used to mask the ulterior motives of bad faith actors. That's why if Vivek really wants to help expose and stop the woke industrial complex, 
I would suggest he stops giving so many feel-good motivational speeches about conservatism and how we need to redefine our national identity and start talking about actual problem-solving solutions and policies when it comes to many of the economic issues that cause people to consider wokeism, socialism, and even Marxism as the solutions to our problems. And here's one problem I can speak from experience. The U.S.'s abusively overpriced cost of healthcare. And coincidentally, as I was preparing to make this video, I was reminded of this issue once again by receiving an almost $900 bill for blood work that I never asked for from a doctor who I will never see again. Which, by the way, the doctor himself didn't even see me at my visit. Instead, he had someone else ask me questions and then take blood samples. And when I asked how much it was going to cost, no one seemed to know. All they could answer was, as long as I have insurance, everything should be okay. This is both a figurative and literal example of surprise billing, which I thought was being addressed by Congress. Because the last time I dealt with this a few years ago, I had to contact my congressional representative in order to get bill collectors off my back from a $5,000 hospital bill I received for a simple in-and-out emergency room visit. Yet I don't expect healthcare to be free. Free healthcare or universal healthcare or Medicare for all, however the left wants to spin it, these are misleading talking points pushed by either grossly misinformed politicians or dangerously disinforming ones. And it really is either one or the other. And here's a perfect example of that. There's a different way to get to universal health care, and I think it's really important because no one's talking about it, is actually you might take the administrative bureaucracy that's responsible for administering those dollars, just like the bureaucracy that administers PPP, by the way, they waste a lot of money, send it to the wrong places, and I would say, let's actually dissolve that entire apparatus, CMS, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, take the money and distribute it to the people who can't afford to buy private health insurance to actually buy private health insurance. And if you crunch those numbers, it's about five to six thousand dollars a person. But it gets you most of the way there. Minute, so get rid of the bureaucracy and give the money no, back to the people. What That's we what need I said. No, what we need to remove is the profit-making middleman of insurance companies. That's what needs to be removed. But, but, You're still helping the insurance companies. Wait, You're but, still giving the money okay, to the Marianne, insurance company. Marianne, I, I think the last time I read about it, and maybe the number is slightly I think that the profit of the health in industry was something like $11 billion, right? And? Does that sound right? I don't know, actually. Okay. And our health care bill is like $2 trillion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying it's not all there. It's 11, not all there. That's exactly that's right, not, Bill. I mean, Past presidential candidates like Marianne Williamson either don't understand basic economics and the fact that everything has a cost, or they do know it, but they don't care about the consequences of promising free stuff as long as they get into positions of power. And making profits in healthcare is not the problem. Profits are actually necessary. Without making this video too long, we can actually benefit from private health insurance companies when they actually do what insurance is supposed to do, help mitigate and spread the inescapable cost of healthcare through a pool of money that people pay into that ensures they won't go broke if they ever have a medical disaster. The problem is the health insurance lobby has helped eliminate competition by guaranteeing itself a pool of customers that can't shop around for options which is why there was nothing affordable about the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, because that is what guaranteed health insurance companies, customers with an individual mandate. But I'm sure someone like Vivek, who has made a fortune in the biopharmaceutical industry with a company like Royvent, could explain it a hell of a lot better than I could. But instead, when he goes on certain interviews, he gets into other conservative talking points that pander to the delusions of the religious base. And so, so and I've said this numerous times, I, I, think the, I think the climate religion has about as much to do with the climate as the Spanish Inquisition had to do with Christ, which is to say nothing at all. <laughs> it was really just about power and dominion and punishment all the way down. And I can I can basically prove that to you in, in a short amount of time, right? If the climate religion do it, do it. really- Vivek clearly does not need my advice when it comes to getting ahead in life. Considering he is 13 years younger than I am, he is light years ahead of me on becoming a multimillionaire and funding his own presidential campaign. But despite the many more IQ points he has than I do, 
he can't seem to get past the same religious blind spot that I managed to outgrow from my Catholic childhood. And I can speak from experience, it's all bullshit. Especially when it comes to exorcisms. Why do people still believe this crap? And I totally agree with Vivek and Jordan Peterson in exposing how apocalyptic alarmism regarding climate change and wokeness itself have become a religion of sorts. But how do they not see the same patterns within the very Judeo-Christian delusions they're both paying lip service to? But I think I get why Vivek feels the need to go there. During the primaries, candidates have to pander to the base, even when they're self-funding their own campaigns. As long as Vivek doesn't push it and start speaking in tongues while handling snakes, he probably knows what he's doing. Yet if part of the overall goal of his presidency is to end the wokeness problem, voters like myself would greatly appreciate hearing actual policy solutions to our biggest economic problems that cause many people, particularly young people, to turn to wokeism and socialism and all the other toxic isms and easy answers the extreme left is known for, just like the all too easy answers the religious right has to offer without any evidence about the most complex questions of life. That's why I would like to make a suggestion to Vivek. If he does not become president, his next book should be titled How I Built a Net Worth of Over $500 Million Before the Age of 40 and Ran for President, and Maybe You Can Do It Too, or something like that. Seriously, if anyone seems to have the secret sauce to what it takes to not just redefine what it means to be an American, but to wildly succeed at the American dream itself, it's Vivek. And the fact that he is a first-generation American born to immigrant parents, he is the quintessential American success story, if there ever was one. I seriously want to know, what does this guy eat for breakfast? What's his daily routine? What's his mindset? More importantly, what advice does he have when it comes to building some wealth considering he started his own asset management firm? At least throw the middle class a couple of bones so we can be in the ballpark or just make it to the parking lot outside the stadium of stratospheric success that less than 1% of the population ever gets to experience. Because let's be honest, not everybody will get as far ahead as Vivek did. God knows I didn't. Not that God exists, but whatever. And I'm positive a lot of Vivek's success has to do with an unusually high IQ. I'm pretty sure he is up there in the Elon Musk, almost Albert Einstein range of intelligence. But more people could avoid falling into the traps of poverty and much less homelessness or just being absolutely down on their luck if we had a better roadmap or instruction manual since our education system keeps failing our kids when it comes to career guidance, personal finances, and just basic economics. How is it possible that in one of the most capitalist countries on earth, We're doing such a piss poor job of teaching kids why we need free markets and entrepreneurship and money for that matter. And can we stop with the age old stupid saying that money is the root of all evil? It is not. The root of all evil, in my humble opinion, are bad faith actors who are power hungry, sadistic psychopaths willing to prey on other people and cause needless suffering and harm, usually under the guise of good intentions. And nowadays, those good intentions seem to be in the form of three-letter acronyms like BLM, DEI mandates, ESG standards, and clearly the CCP. My family already experienced that level of deception the hard way with the communist regime in Cuba. It's a damn shame that too many supposed progressives in this country continue making excuses for that tyranny, and I'm positive a lot of it has to do with absolute ignorance of basic economics and history though I think a lot of it is intentional too. And religion doesn't help either. As a matter of fact, religiosity played a very big role in allowing the Castro regime to take over Cuba. One way it did was with the amount of people who thought they could pray away the problem and assumed God would somehow take care of it, maybe in the afterlife. That's not how reality works. And this is how the Castro regime took over Cuba, how Hitler took over Germany, and how Xi Jinping is slowly trying to take over the world. 
It's the willful ignorance of religiosity that blinds people to reality and ultimately to the solutions to problems that many people find themselves praying for in the first place. If by any remote chance Vivek watches this video, I would love to take him up on the challenge that he posed on Jordan Peterson's interview. Keep me honest, right? Yeah. If you're if you're seeing a deviation from this, okay. anyone in my shoes deserves to be called out and, and roasted over it because that's what keeps us honest. At least that's what I hope this video does. Not that I expect Vivek to come onto my tiny YouTube channel, but I'd be more than happy to ask him exactly how we'll be solving our problems through actual policies that could be implemented and how to finally get past our avoidable political tribalism. The concept of the American dream doesn't need redefining any more than our real problems need to be solved. Will Vivek become the president that finally solves our problems, or will he just become another talking head on cable news that forever panders to a religious conservative base? If I got anything wrong in this video, please let me know in the comments below. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell for upcoming videos, and check out the links below for my original art and merchandise. And thanks for watching.